My wife Gwen took a sip of wine, sighed deeply, and looked me straight in the eyes, adopting a serious expression after we finished our Valentine's Day dinner. We've always taken this holiday seriously since we got married 22 years ago, this evening was special for us. We always dined at home, this tradition arose from the humble beginnings of our marriage when we couldn't afford to eat out at restaurants, but at least we always dressed up specially to make the event particularly festive. I was dressed in a formal tuxedo, and Gwen looked stunning, as she did every year before, in a tight-fitting red dress that flattered every curve of her body. Her dark chestnut hair had been carefully styled by hairdressers earlier in the day. With each passing year, she seemed to become even more beautiful, after the children came, Valentine's Day became even more important for us. We used it as a way to reconnect with each other and bring romance back into our marriage after the chaos the kids brought into our lives. And I think that Valentine's Day helped our marriage grow stronger. Our son Jake was staying overnight at Gwen's parents' house, and Charlotte, our eldest daughter, was far from home, studying in her final year of college. Matthew, we need to talk, Gwen said after taking a sip of wine and setting her glass down in front of her. At that moment, I realized she had something serious to say to me, as she called me Matthew, not Matt. She always used Matthew when she needed to discuss something important with me, Matthew, I love you, Matthew, I'm pregnant, Matthew, we need to get married before the baby is born, Matthew, I'm pregnant again, Matthew, I want to be a stay-at-home mom, and, Matthew, I want to go back to work. Well, you get the idea, so with a bit of anxious trepidation, I asked, frowning, what's the matter? Well, we've been married for a long time, and lately, I've been thinking a lot about my past, especially concerning my sexual life, she started indirectly. Okay why? I said slowly. Meanwhile, the hairs on the back of my neck stood up. I had a terrible premonition that something very serious was about to happen, especially because she mentioned only her sexual life, not ours. As you know, you were my only sexual partner, and it was you who took my virginity. On the other hand, when we met, you already had sexual experience, Gwen reminded me. I had slept with just two other girls before we started dating, I laughed sarcastically, defensively. In total, I had sex only three or four times, so I couldn't consider myself particularly experienced in that regard. To be honest, I think I was quite clumsy in bed, but anyway, go on. Well, the thing is, Matthew, that. No matter how you look at it, you slept with two other girls, and I got pregnant with Charlotte just a few months into our relationship, Gwen continued, as if lamenting some higher injustice. The only mistake I've never regretted, I smiled, the real truth was that at the time, I panicked. I was young, foolish, and terribly afraid of having impregnated my girlfriend at an age when I was too young to be a father. A stern man to man talk with my father set me straight and made me understand what was important in my young life. Eventually, Gwen and I got married, yes, it was a classic, shotgun wedding, except that the shotgun was held by my father, and despite everything, our marriage succeeded, that was enough for Jake to come along a few years later. At least, until now, I believed that we had an excellent and solid union, but now I have this nagging premonition that any minute now, Gwen is going to draw a line under our previously happy marriage, Gwen smiled and nodded in agreement to my comment, I think so too. She said cheerfully. Basically, I've been thinking a lot about what it's like to have sex with other men, and it's an area I really want to explore. In short, I want to make our marriage open. Damn. I whispered barely audibly, and my heart almost stopped beating in my chest. Just as I suspected. The metaphorical wrench she threw at me was huge and spinning fast, heading straight for my head. So, what do you think? She asked, carefully watching my reaction that I was a bit, no, I was very disturbed by her lack of nervousness when she asked this question. Gwen had just dropped a huge bomb on our marriage, and without the slightest hint of concern, she's asking me what I think about it. My God, Gwen! I exclaimed, trying to compose myself. You're asking me this on Valentine's Day? On our special evening? Just like that, presenting me with a decision you've already made? What if I say, no? 
I sincerely hope you won't refuse. This is very important to me, but it doesn't mean I love you any less, she tried to reassure me, again, without any hint of emotion. Considering where we started, you've made me the happiest woman in the world, so I don't want our marriage to suddenly end. It's not about you, it's about me. I just want to experience sex with other men. And how long do you plan to experience sex with other men? I asked sarcastically. By the way, maybe you'll share how many men you intend to sleep with before your curiosity is satisfied. Honestly, I don't know either of those things for sure yet. I just know that this is something I need to do, she answered calmly again. Great, at that moment my intuition started loudly signaling that something fishy was going on, and I decided to check if I was right. So, how do you think this is going to work? If we open our marriage, you wouldn't mind if I start sleeping with other women? I asked casually, testing her resolve. No way. I already told you, it's about me, not about us, Gwen firmly retorted, emphasizing the words, me, and, us. I don't think I could bear it if you slept with other women. I almost hysterically laughed at my wife's statement, you, are you serious? I asked her between bouts of laughter. You're saying you plan to sleep with other men, and I should just sit at home and wait for you humiliated, like some cuckold, and I'm not allowed to sleep with other women. Don't be crude, Matt. Quinn snapped back. I repeat, it's not about us. I can't believe you're taking this so hard. It's all clear and simple, and there's nothing special about it. Many married couples do this and still live in a happy marriage. What do you mean, nothing special, and what couples are you referring to? Name at least one, specifically. Gwen sat silently, not answering, her lips tightly pressed together, with an expression of strong irritation on her face, though, for some reason, she could no longer look me straight in the eye. So, where do you plan to meet these other men? I broke the prolonged tense pause when it became obvious that no answer was coming from her. Well. I would meet them wherever I see a man I like, for example, at the office or, wait a minute, hold on. Do you already have someone in mind? I suspiciously asked, interrupting her mid-sentence. I didn't think it was a coincidence that she first mentioned the office, since Gwen almost immediately flushed deeply, I got my answer. The rat was about to stick its curious nose out of its hole. Now, Gwen tensely watched me, squinting her eyes, as I leisurely refilled my glass with a new and very large portion of wine. So, do you agree to open our marriage or not? She pressed, unable to hold back, and her voice seemed to carry a persistent plea. With my reaction, I made it clear to Gwen that I was not satisfied with the conditions she set, and I, in turn, felt that she was starting to panic because she didn't get the desired response, with one deep gulp, I almost emptied my glass of wine before responding to her, the thing is, Gwen, all this stuff you're telling me, it's all nonsense, isn't it? Matt, how dare you? My wife snapped back angrily, I wanted to come to a mutual decision, made together, as a couple. Ha! And you say what you're insisting on is, mutual? I retorted indignantly, mimicking air quotes on the last word. What's wrong with you? Now Gwen looked genuinely furious. Mark Taylor, I dropped the name with a smirk, looking her straight in the eyes. These two words instantly had the effect of a bomb exploding on Gwen, or rather, a balloon suddenly bursting, releasing all its air. W who? All her anger vanished immediately, replaced by a nervous tremor that had been remarkably absent at the start of our conversation. Stop talking nonsense. I now became angry. Mark Taylor, your colleague at work. He joined your company about eight months ago. He must have caught your eye, and you his, because how long have you been seeing each other behind my back? Three, or all four months. What about that for a mutual decision? It seems to me you already opened our marriage a long time ago and are enjoying how smart and cunning you are. 
Though, I can't recall ever giving you permission to explore with this mark dash the dash sucker dot I in any other circumstances, Gwen's facial expression at that moment would have been worthy of an artist's brush, creating a masterpiece of shocked emotional reaction. Her mouth was slightly open, her eyebrows shot up in astonishment, and her eyes widened in stunned fear that I could almost see her brain working at a frenzied pace, rushing thoughts back and forth one after the other. How did I know? When did I find out? How much did I know? These were the questions Gwen was asking herself before she finally managed to gather her thoughts and mentally ask herself, how can I salvage this situation? Yes, I. I admit, I liked Mark, she cautiously began, and we discussed the possibility of having sex together. However, we both agreed that it would be uncomfortable to do so without your blessing. Without my blessing? And if I say, no, what will you do? I asked her again, Gwen didn't respond, sitting opposite me with evident irritation churning inside her, noticeable by her pursed lips on a downturned head, her jaw muscles working on her cheeks, and her hands, sometimes clenched into fists, sometimes nervously smoothing the fabric of her skirt over her hips. So, are you saying there was nothing between you? No sex, no kisses, no dates. I interrupted the lingering silence, insisting on answers, hoping to still get some truth from my wife. All right, we had a few dates, Gwen finally admitted, obviously reluctantly. And, yes, we kissed, but we haven't slept together. Well, it seems that what I'm witnessing is what's known as a trickle of truth, hmm, I said without much enthusiasm. And Mark's wife is okay with this. Again, fear and surprise flickered across Gwen's face before she composed herself and replied, trying to sound confident, yes, she's okay with it. Mark practices polyamory, and so does his wife. Clarissa is completely fine with this arrangement, and she also has a second partner. Polyamory is something I would like to explore too. You might want to, but I don't, I said firmly, now Gwen began to get nervous. She realized that I was tying up and nodding her free-loving aspirations, but she still wasn't sure how much I knew. Well, open relationships and polyamory aren't for everyone, and I knew they wouldn't suit you. Open relationships, or polyamory? Which one are you specifically talking about? Now I was playing with her like a cat with a mouse. They are actually different things. I, well... I'm not exactly sure yet, so I want to explore both, she mumbled, unsure which way to turn. Both? Open relationships mean you are in a primary relationship but can freely have sex within mutually agreed and respected boundaries. Polyamory is when you have simultaneous romantic relationships with multiple people. Does your boy Mark know you want to sleep around, or haven't you told him that yet? It was amusing how Gwen's mouth opened and closed, just like a fish out of water, unable to come up with anything to say, her eyes, by the way, were bulging out just as much. Catching her out was all too easy. I didn't, no, I didn't mean that, she finally muttered in desperation. Alas, this conversation was not going at all as she would have liked. She looked utterly flustered, as if she'd been figuratively caught with her panties down. So what did you mean, then? I asked. By the way, I don't recall signing up for polyamory or an open marriage when we got married. Let's face the truth, you just want me to allow you to cheat after you've already cheated. You wanted permission for an affair with Mark, while keeping the safety of our marriage and making me the perfect cuckold, right? Seeing the vacant expression on her face and her eyes darting back and forth, unable to come up with anything more to say in her defense, as I had completely read her intentions, was enough for me, God, this is getting boring. I thought everything would be much more complicated than what I'm seeing now, I declared, slapping my hands on my knees and standing up from the chair, leaving Gwen with a completely bewildered expression, I pulled out my phone from my pocket, walked over to the window, and half turned to observe my wife's reaction. Then I dialed a number and made a call. Hello, Clarissa, how's Valentine's Day going at your house? Personally, I'm ready to file the papers. 
I chuckled softly, well, I got her to tie herself up in so many tight knots that she'll likely never be able to untangle them. Ha, huh, yeah. Now my mouth dropped open in astonishment, what did he say? Open relationships and polyamory. Damn, that's almost exactly what Gwen said. I can't believe they wrote this stupid script together, wait, what? Where am I now? I guess in a polyamorous relationship with a bisexual woman. I started laughing hysterically again, I was sure Gwen could hear Clarissa laughing loudly on the other end of the line. Wow. Mark is on his knees, crying and begging you. You're lucky, how is Gwen taking it? Oh, you should see her face, she's like in a stupor and just can't understand what's happening. Alright, I guess it's time for Gwen and me to continue. Nice talking to you. Let's meet up once the dust settles. Bye bye, Clarissa. The bewilderment on Gwen's face turned to a realization of humiliation as she understood whom I was talking to and about what, the adulterer's carefully crafted plan had blindly led them into a trap that Clarissa and I had set for them that I wonder, are all cheaters this foolish? Gwen started our conversation in control, and lost everything in the blink of an eye, not even suspecting that all the aces were in my hands. I don't think I've ever felt as powerful as I did in those moments after ending the call with Clarissa, I headed to our home office and came back with two envelopes and a pen. I handed one of them to Gwen, we were going to serve the papers to both of you at your office, but you wouldn't believe the fees they charge for such a service. I even thought for a minute that I was in the wrong business. Actually, the whole plan was Clarissa's idea. I can tell you in confidence that behind her sweet and caring persona lies a very cunning and crafty mind. Anyway, here's your court summons. Inside, there's also a separation agreement, I said, giving Gwen one of the two envelopes. Nothing special, it just outlines that you'll need to move out of the house, divide our finances, and agree on the terms of temporary custody over Jake. Meanwhile, we'll sleep in separate rooms and become nothing more than housemates. Yes, one more thing. It also states that Mark is not to come within 30 meters of this house or in any way communicate with Jake. Charlotte is an adult, so she can decide for herself whether she wants to meet Mark or not. Could you sign this agreement so I can give a copy to my lawyer? Gwen stared blankly at the papers lying in front of her that needed to be signed. Judging by her look, I was almost certain that the meaning of the letters, words, and sentences couldn't penetrate her foggy mind. She just sat there, dumbly staring at the unopened envelope, appearing petrified, unable to comprehend what exactly was happening. How? was all she could muster, realizing there was no point in continuing to play her charade with me. You want to ask how I found out? I sat down next to her again and pulled out the contents of the second envelope. I'm afraid I've known about it for quite some time. Not sure exactly when you started cheating on me, but I have an idea. Here, I slapped a stack of papers from the second envelope, are some of your text messages you exchanged with that idiot Mark. It's amazing how many explicit words and phrases there are. You never talk to me with such dirty and indecent language. You went through my phone. She exclaimed. Well, obviously. Otherwise, I wouldn't have all this evidence. Then I laid out several photographs in front of her, showing her and Mark passionately kissing, hugging, going on dates, dining together, and looking very much like a couple in love. These pictures alone were damning evidence of Gwen's infidelity. So, you were spying on us? Gwen asked incredulously, glancing briefly at the photos and then quickly looking away that I nodded, Clarissa and I split the cost of a private detective. This photo hurts the most, I said, flicking towards her an image of Gwen and Mark entering a hotel. Let me remind you, in case you forgot, this happened on my birthday. You told me then that you had to urgently go on a business trip. Instead, you went to a hotel with Mark. It doesn't take a genius to figure out what you were doing there, does it? Damn, you couldn't spare even one day for me. That was low, even for you, Gwen. Did I really deserve such disrespect from my own wife? I didn't think. 
I didn't mean to deceive you, Gwen stammered, trying to form some defense and justification for her actions. Just, well, it happened. You were always working and never with me. I was lonely, and Mark became a good friend at the office, and I liked the attention he gave me. Then, well, one thing led to another, and, and we fell in love with each other. If you were home more often, maybe this never would have happened, at the end of her confession, her tone subtly shifted from defensive to accusatory, as if in her infidelity, I was as much, if not more, to blame than she was. Then Gwen picked up and started to scrutinize a photograph with several text messages, wait, this is from Mark's phone. She exclaimed. Well, dear. You didn't want to deceive me, and I didn't plan on spying on you. It just happened that way, I said, ironically repeating Gwen's own words. You received a message from Mark while you were in the shower, probably needed after returning home from your extracurricular Kama Sutra sessions with him. I was already suspicious of your behavior, especially since your work attire had become more indecent, and then I found sexy lingerie that I had never seen you wear before. I only caught a glimpse of part of the message, but it was enough to pique my interest and check other conversations on your phone. And what do you know, I stumbled upon a whole load of messages. When I figured out who this guy was that you were actively texting, I checked to see if Mark was married. Turns out, he has three kids, younger than our Jake, how could you, Gwen? She remained silent, looking down and away, so I continued, then I reached out to Clarissa on social media. She's a very nice lady, and in no way deserved the dirty tricks you both played behind her back. As soon as she saw the evidence, we met and agreed to share everything we had, remembering one of Gwen's last phrases, I spoke to her more sternly, I can't believe you're blaming me for your affair. Where do you think the money for Charlotte's university education comes from? Where do you think the money for our mortgage, so we could live in a nice house, comes from? And where do you think the money comes from to have decent food on the table and to feed Jake? That's called responsibility, Gwen. Obviously, out of the two of us, I'm the only one who takes his duties seriously. I spat out the undeniable fact, despite the anger building up inside me, I remained completely calm on the outside and didn't lose my head yelling at my wife. In the situation I found myself in, the reaction of a cheated husband could be twofold, either fall into a fit of rage, yelling at Gwen and blaming her for everything, or cry and beg her to come back, promising to be a better husband, the truth was, I had already been through all of that. Clarissa and I supported each other throughout the entire process of discovering the infidelity. Now, my prevailing feeling was relief. Relief that this nightmare was coming to an end that a thought struck me, and I sent a few short messages. Seconds later, Gwen's phone rang. From the screams coming through the receiver in a familiar voice, I knew it was Charlotte. Dear, sweetie, I can explain everything. Gwen desperately pleaded with our daughter. It wasn't like that. I, no, listen. Please, no. You shouldn't do this. Charlotte, I. I love you. Wait, sweetie, I. Hello. Hello. Gwen slowly took the phone away from her ear and began to sob. Why did you tell Charlotte? You had no right to do that. She doesn't want to see me anymore. How could you? My soon-to-be ex-wife lashed out at me, screaming like a madwoman. No, I had every right. I retorted heatedly. It's called consequences, Gwen. By the way, I told Jake and our parents everything too. What? Gwen screamed again in horror, and at that moment her phone started ringing off the hook again. This time it was a call from her mother. Mom. Mom, please listen. I just. Gwen couldn't get a word in as her mother furiously scolded her wayward daughter. Now she looked like a miserable and completely broken woman. She wants to talk to you, Gwen said quietly after a few minutes, looking visibly hurt, having been thoroughly chastised by her mother, and handed me her phone. Hello, Jill, I greeted my mother-in-law in an even tone. 
Matt, I apologize again for what Gwen has done. We didn't raise her to be like this. I admit, we weren't sure about you when she got pregnant with Charlotte, but you acted like a real man and became a worthy husband and father. You are the best thing that could have happened to Gwen, and I'm very sorry that you didn't get the same in return. I think Gwen understands that now, I said, looking at my wife and seeing her avert her gaze and bite her trembling lip. Charlotte doesn't want to see her anymore. It might be better if Jake comes home tomorrow when we've both calmed down a bit. I'm sure his mom will try to explain everything. I know he was upset when I briefly told him everything over the phone. Good luck to you, Matt. Please, stay in touch, it would be sad to not see you again, Jill asked me, with sincere sadness in her voice. Goodbye, Jill, and thank you. I hung up the phone, placed it on the table, and looked intently at Gwen, listen, I want you to know, I haven't informed anyone at your work about your affair with Mark. I know they have a strict policy against intimate relationships between employees. Although I was ready to tell them everything, Clarissa convinced me not to do it because she was worried about losing child support and any spousal support in the divorce, hearing these words, Gwen sighed with obvious relief. Moreover, I was ready to move you to a spare room, but I'm not sure I can sleep in our bedroom again, because you've tainted both yourself and our bed. This was your personal mess on Valentine's Day. Thanks for trampling on our special evening. Gwen continued to be silent, just dumbly staring at me, looking utterly alone and broken. Since then, I've never celebrated Valentine's Day again. It became a poisonously bitter reminder of how Gwen treated me on this holiday. She completely ruined what had always been a special evening for us. What are your thoughts on OP? Thank you for joining us in our tales where revenge is served piping hot. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more stories that guarantee your satisfaction. Stay tuned for the next one to satisfy your appetite for revenge. If you're under 18, brace yourself. It's not for the faint-hearted.